everybody, my name is Tara and I make homemade skincare products like all the time here on my channel. I also do Etsy related videos, business related videos, and just anything in between in that, those categories. So I sort of started a new series here on my channel and we're basically going back to the beginning and I'm doing a whole series on just how to formulate skincare products for beginners. I started out talking about what equipment is needed to make skincare products. That was in my last video. I'll link it up here if you guys want to watch it. I'll link it down in the description and if you're wondering why I basically look exactly the same as I did in that video is because I'm literally recording them back to back. I just changed my shirt to sort of like mix it up a little bit. Anyways, so in this video we're going to be talking about sanitization. This kind of somewhat sort of goes hand in hand with equipment because some of the sanitization equipment sort of overlaps with equipment, okay? So let's just get into it. First, I want to talk about why sanitization is so important. And this will sort of somewhat overlap with preservatives, which is going to be my next video. It's important to keep your, not only your equipment, but your work area sterilized, your hands sterilized, and just like everything clean, okay? You want to prevent any hair from getting in your products, any bacteria. You just don't want nothing to get in your products, okay? Keep it clean. So what I like to do is I use rubbing alcohol all the time and I like to keep a little spray bottle like this filled with rubbing alcohol and I, I literally use this all the time. Before I start to formulate anything, I spray down my entire work surface and wipe it down with paper towels. And I mentioned paper towels in my last video and I talked about why paper towels are so important. Paper towels Towels, I just are I, to me they they're, they're just more clean than towels. I don't have a really hot dryer that can like sterilize towels. So for me, paper towels is the most sterile way to go. So I spray down my work area and I wipe it down with a paper towel. Another thing that I do, I also like to spray down my equipment with rubbing alcohol before I use it. So like if I'm using a beaker or two beakers, I will spray those down with rubbing alcohol and I sort of let them sit for a little bit. It's best to let the rubbing alcohol completely dry on the beakers, at least I'm pretty sure, but Typically, I spray a lot of rubbing alcohol on it and it would take forever for it to dry. So after I let it sit for about five minutes, I just dry it down with a paper towel. And I make sure I'm wearing gloves with the paper towel. That way, you know, my hand doesn't really like make it dirty. And the reason why I'm not too worried about like sterilizing the beaker before I put my product in it is I'll explain. Okay, you could boil your beakers. So fill up a pot of water and then keep your beakers in there and let it boil for 20 minutes. And that would actually sterilize it. Just like you sterilize baby bottles that way, you can sterilize it that way. Or you can buy like a baby bottle sterilizer. I've also heard of people using pressure cookers. I, a lot of people use pressure cookers when it comes to canning to sterilize mason jars. And you can do the same method with mason jars as you're doing beakers. And this will sterilize the beaker. But it's kind of unnecessary because if you're spraying down the beaker with rubbing alcohol, you're already like giving a good sterilization. Then you're adding your product into your beakers. And then this next phase is what I think is crucial and that's heating up your product. Typically, heating up your formulations are necessary when you're doing emulsions, but even if you're not emulsifying anything, I still like to heat up my product to make sure all the ingredients are sterilized. But make sure you're using ingredients that aren't heat sensitive, because if you're using like extracts or something, all the benefits from the extracts will just be cooked away. So make sure you're only using ingredients that aren't heat sensitive when you're heating up your formulations. So my beaker's sterilized, my product's on the inside, I set them in my pot of like, you know, a couple inches of water, heat it for 20 minutes, to 158 degrees Fahrenheit. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I do this in almost every single one of my homemade formulations. So if you've never seen one of my like homemade lotions, homemade face washes, go watch those. I always take both my beakers, cover them up with aluminum foil, put them in a pot, of like an inch of water, heat it up to 158 degrees Fahrenheit and hold it there for 20 minutes. That sterilizes all the ingredients. So now I wanna go back to that whole sterilizing boiling method I talked about. So like I said, you can boil a pot of water, stick a mason jar in there, stick a beaker in there, anything glass in there and it'll sterilize it. So if you have any glass equipment, you can sterilize it that way. Or like I said, you can get a pressure cooker or a baby bottle sterilizer, do it that way. Also this goes for metal. So if you have like hand mixers and you have the little attachments, those are typically 
basically metal. I've never seen one that's not metal. Same with your immersion blender. That's metal as well. At least mine is. You can sterilize those by boiling them. And I personally like to just give it a good spray down with rubbing alcohol as well. Just, you know, make sure it's nice and extra clean. And then this brings me to the next topic. So let's just say you decide to sterilize your equipment ahead of time. So that way when you go to make your products, like maybe tomorrow morning, everything's already sterilized. You don't have to sterilize it. So if you want to sterilize a mason jar or a beaker, gla anything glass, anything metal, you can go ahead and sterilize it. And then when you take it out of uh, being sterilized, put it in a plastic baggie. Make sure it's like a Ziploc, like airlock baggie, not just like the little flip top sandwich baggies. Make sure it's like airlocked. And then it's stored away in just some place. But if you see my last video over equipment, then you would remember this big old tub, which is what I keep all of my equipment in. So if you do like sterilize a glass beaker or you know mason jar or whatever, put it in a big baggie and then just keep it in your big tub where you store all your equipment. Then it's sterilized for whenever you wanna make products next. Now for the rest of my sanitization equipment that is crucial is some gloves. So I always buy like just a bunch of boxes of gloves in bulk. That way I always have them. I go through so many gloves. So having gloves crucial to making any skincare product. I know I don't use gloves in my video tutorials on how to make skincare products. It just it just makes my life so much easier not using them when I'm recording. Uh, those products I make in my videos are only for me. And if they're not for me, I give them to like my boyfriend or like my mom or like a close friend. But if you're selling product, make sure you're wearing gloves while you're making your products. Very important. The next thing I think is very important are hair nets. And I actually bought a reusable hair net. I just put it on anytime I make anything. I even put it on when I'm putting on labels too, just to make sure you don't know stray hairs. You know fall out and somehow get into the label and I don't notice it so hair nuts super important get yourself just a reusable one that way you don't have to keep buying them you'll save money getting a reusable one and a couple things that aren't necessary but you might find them to be needed at some point is some goggles maybe if you're like making homemade soap uh, you definitely should be wearing goggles with that what everything that I make that I sell on my shop I don't need goggles because I don't really ever get anything sprayed up at my face but it can happen so getting some goggles would be a good idea. Um, also some kind of like respiratory mask because if you're working with certain types of ingredients, specifically powdered ingredients, you shouldn't breathe those in. Just really depends on what you're working with but it's a mask and a goggles is good to have just in case you ever need them. And I actually think that is everything I have for this video. This is actually a lot shorter than I expected. If I forgot to mention anything, I will mention it down in the description box. So always check the description box of my videos because I kind of feel like I always forget something for my video because my videos cover so much information and I have like so many things going through my head that it's sometimes hard to just get it all jotted down on a piece of paper and then project it to you guys through a camera. So if I ever forget anything, I'm sorry. Also, if you guys have any tips or tricks when it comes to sanitization, leave them down in the comments below. I'm always learning new things about just everything I do. I literally learn something new every single day. That's awesome, thumbs up for me. But sanitization is super important when it comes to your products. You don't want them to grow any mold, yeast, bacteria. And the best way to prevent that without preservatives, which I said we will talk about that in my next video. I have a lot to cover about preservatives. The best way to do it is keeping a clean, sterile environment and keeping all of your equipment sterilized and just keeping everything nice and clean. So I hope you guys learned a little something from this video. Let me know if you have any tips, like I said, and also, like I say, every single one of my videos. You're probably sick of hearing it, but I sell handmade skincare products over at my Etsy shop. I will have it linked up here and I'll have it linked down in the description box, so super easy for you guys to find. Hope you guys are enjoying the series. Let me know if you have any ideas for the series. Leave them down in the comments below and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! I'm stuck in the motions. I've been consumed by the wrath of time like I'm from I'm shattered in this life. It's still the path that I've chosen. Because I've had a vision. Now I'm on a mission to find myself with